Um, greetings to the Canadian Institute in Greece. My name is David Rupp, the director of the Institute. Um, this is the final, um, the final element of our fall program. And um, we have been specializing this fall on uh, topics um, more or less related to um, Greek history, contemporary Greek history, early modern Greek history, and uh, in this case, uh, Canada and Greece. And uh, the, uh, what we're going to have today is a uh, multi-person multi uh, presentation of the Greek-Canadian uh, History Project. Um, and we're very pleased that this is another example of our growing relationship with York University um, on the edge of Toronto. Should we call it Toronto? It is Toronto. It is Toronto. Metropolitan. <laughs> Metropolitan Toronto. Um, and that uh, we, look, we look forward to other aspects of uh, this relationship between the Institute and the, uh, and the university and its various programs. Um, I'm going to introduce uh, three people because uh, there'll be three people speaking. Um, and I'm not really sure of the order, but I'll, I'll start with uh, Chris Grappos. Uh, was up here in front. He's a PhD candidate in the Department of, Department of History at York University. He's working on a dissertation that's examining um, the expressions of Greek uh, immigrant homeland politics in Toronto, Montreal during the, during the junta, 1967 to 1974. Um, and that he is interweaving uh, uh, the documentary sources, which he's been telling about that exist in, uh, in um, Canada but have yet to really be properly uh, um, cataloged and organized, along with uh, what was happening at the same time in Quebec during this, the, what is called the Quiet Revolution. So there are lots of, it was a period when in Canada as well as here in Greece, many things were happening. Um, um, and Chris is, um, you saw the banner I hope, and you see the relationship here, is the co-founder of the Greek Canadian History Project. Um, and this is designed, uh, this initiative designed to acquire, preserve, digitize, democratize, not quite sure what that would be, but I suppose that's part of dissemination, <laughs> the historical materials and knowledge concerning the experience of Greek Im immigrants in Canada. Certainly in this country, much has been said about the um, Greek diaspora, but not much about Canada. It's about other, other places. And he is the holder uh, at the moment of the Hellenic Heritage Foundation Fellowship in Modern Greek History <coughs> and uh, serves on the executive board of the Modern Greek Studies Association. Uh, the Hellenic Heritage Foundation is an organization <laughs> based in Canada that, um, unlike many foundations, is uh, sort of a, a pan-Canadian and pan-Hellenic uh, attempt to uh, fund uh, uh, activities and support activities relating to Greek heritage in a broader sense than often is the case in Canada previously. Um, I think Sakis uh, Gekas is going to come in afterwards, uh, as I understand it, and we had the pleasure two weeks ago of having uh, 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 Professor Gekas here give a lecture on, uh, on 19th century uh, Greek on economic history in the sense of the creation of Greece from a series of <coughs> regional states, I think was the word he wanted to work use. Use um, is particularly interested in British colonialism in the Mediterranean um, and post-colonial um, um, activities, and especially uh, from his um, uh, university days at the University of um, Kerkera. Uh, the history of the Iranian state. He is the co-director of the uh, Greek Canadian History Project and is in fact um, at the York University. He's here on sabbatical as the um, um, Hellenic Heritage Foundation Chair of Modern Greek History at York. He, this is one of, as I mentioned last time, one of three chairs, one in Montre Montreal connected with McGill and the other in, uh, in Vancouver at Simon Fraser. And the third person, um, this is the order I think that's happening, but we'll see, um, is uh, Kelly Petropoulos, um, who's here in front. Um, she holds an MA in uh, history from McMaster University, and, and having done her undergraduate work in history at York University. Um, 
she, she has a, a very interesting MA thesis topic, uh, 60s permissiveness, six inches short of a feminist, uh, which explored the uh, miniskirt as a cultural revolution. Um, um, and uh, we will let, uh, afterwards, uh, at the reception, you can find out more about the, what was liberation and what was permissive, permissive in this. Then she went on, uh, she saw the light and realized that academia, uh, unlike many of us, we never saw the light, uh, that there are other things to do, so she had a, a postgraduate diploma in corporate communications and public relations at Seneca College. Um, she currently works at York University, uh, at York International, which is a part of York University, um, as a summer study of abroad assistant, and she coordinates uh, programs uh, here, summer abroad pro programs into this coming summer in Greece. Um, she's also the public relations uh, uh, coordinator for the Greek Canadian History Project. And um, I also should introduce, I don't believe she's speaking, is uh, Dr. Marilyn Lambert, who is um, uh, from York International. Um, she is a, uh, now the second time in a, in a little over a year's time she's been here now. We have to see each other again. Um, a driving force in York's uh, uh, international program and the connection here in Greece. So we're very pleased to see uh, Marilyn again here. So we're, we have a, at least one uh, uh, alumni, uh, Paul Fatos, and many others, from New York and University as well. So we welcome you to the Institute. And um, so we're going to uh, end our fall program with a very interesting uh, presentation. And um, afterwards, we'll have a, a chance for your questions, interactions, and then we're going to have a reception uh, start you off on your holiday uh, activities. So uh, Chris, <coughs> we'll start with Chris. Okay, so thank you for coming tonight. Uh, thank you to Dr. David Rupp and to Dr. Uh, Jonathan Tomlinson for the hospitality here at the Canadian Institute in Greece. And I'd like to thank Dr. Marilyn lambert Reich as well for being such an influential push in us coming across the Atlantic here. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> so um, tonight we're going to be talking about the Greek Canadian History Project. And when this began, I don't think that there was ever the expectation that we would be here in Greece giving a presentation or that it would grow to the extent that it has. So I'd like to provide some introductory remarks. Uh, Professor Agekas is going to speak afterwards and he's going to give uh, an overview of the academic goals of the Greek Canadian History Project. Uh, Callie will then uh, follow uh, Dr. Agekas who will talk about the social media <coughs> platform that we have. And then we're going to come back to myself and we're going to kind of go through a, a very small piece of the collection that we have housed at York University. And I'm going to give some context as to uh, the photos you see and uh, hopefully we can learn together. Um, what I hope to do in the latter part of the presentation is to show the entanglement of Greek and Canadian history. So at its core, the GCHP is an initiative designed and committed to identifying, digitizing, preserving, and providing access, which is what I was trying to say when I wrote democratize. Okay. Uh, I, always wanted to, I always wanted to be uh, an academic because I found that I could make up words. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, I got called out on that one. Okay, so... Uh, so providing uh, access to primary source historical materials that reflect the experiences of Canada's Greek immigrants and their descendants. So in, in order to achieve this, the GCHP is focused on acquiring historical collections that consist of, but are not limited to, of course, uh, letters, pamphlets, photographs, diaries, yearbooks, meeting minutes, mission statements, audio and visual materials, and many other <coughs> documents uh, of historical importance. This initiative is being undertaken with the intent on providing the resources and infrastructure to reach a more complete understanding of how immigrants uh, to Canada shaped and were themselves shaped by uh, their new environment in Canada. In this worthwhile endeavor, time is critical, as the stories of Greek immigrants 
uh, leave us with the generation that created them, we are left with a sad and irreparable deficit that the GCHP is working towards solving at the moment. So the foundation of the Greek Canadian History Project actually dates back to uh, an initial problem that inspired me to go to graduate school. I was in third year at the time, I had no ambition of going to graduate school then, but uh, I was called to write on a paper of, on the Greeks, uh, and so the topic was uh, very open-ended, and I said to myself, uh, or I schemed to myself, I, I should say, uh, this was going to be a sure A+. Uh, I had done 20, 21 years of research by hearing stories from uh, my mom, my dad, aunts and uncles, and of course, uh, the all-knowing and all-seeing Yao Papu, who had told me about their experiences from uh, some time ago. Uh, what I was going to find out later was that the world that they knew as Greece had changed extensively and the world that they had created known as Greek Canada uh, was quite different from uh, modern Greece and uh, I would realize this on my first trip when I came to Greece when I was 16 years old. So uh, when I was doing research what I found was that uh, the sources that I was encountering spoke about large circle dances, uh, weird and delicious uh, foreign foods, um, last names that were really difficult to pronounce, and how uh, most often children and uh, the children of Greek immigrants kind of made their way and navigated through their way through Canadian society uh, after being uh, forcefully pushed into this uh, life of remembering where their parents uh, had come from. And so what I really started to see was that this was uh, a story and a historical narrative that reflected how other people saw uh, Greeks and their descendants in Canada, and not a story of the uh, political, socioeconomic, and many other uh, nuances and uh, uh, other facets that colored the Greek immigrant experience in Canada. And so. Uh, I decided to go to grad school at that point, and when I got there, I encountered a far more imminent and pressing problem, and that is that uh, after the rigorous preparation and coursework, um, speaking with uh, Greek immigrants uh, themselves, I started to encounter a lot of uh, sources and materials that were molding away in boxes in people's basements. They were very difficult to get at. The uh, time that it was taking for me to access materials was uh, really problematic and uh, well I, I got really jealous of my friends who were telling me that they were going to an archive for six months and uh, finishing all of their research and then getting down to writing their dissertation and I said at that point and I uh, sat and come to York uh, by that point and I started telling them that there's, there's going to be nothing written on Greek immigrants if this problem persists and so we started talking, and the Portuguese Canadian History Project was brought to, her, to my attention. And Gilberto Fernandez at York University is leading this, and he's a colleague of mine. And so, uh, after speaking with him many times, we followed their model. And what we did was we partnered with the Claire Thomas and Special Collections Archive at York University, which was a very, it has been a very beneficial partnership. And what it did was it allowed us to be uh, academics and for myself an aspiring academic um, and also simultaneously the intermediary between the community that I researched and the very uh, esoteric archive which people don't really have um, an understanding of and uh, have never really experienced even though they might have a, sort of a mini archive in their in their basement so uh, we established this partnership and it had a lot of benefits in that it gave us the opportunity to work with a professionalized staff, uh, a staff that looks at preservation with uh, scientific precision and with uh, scientific knowledge. And this allowed us to go to the community that I study and tell them that uh, there is an effort being done to preserve the materials that you've created here. And the response was overwhelming, and it's become increasingly overwhelming since we started uh, about two years ago. So, we, uh, since we have started the program, 
we have had many uh, public history events. Now, public history is a, an emerging um, field in which the uh, history, that, as it is done by academics in the university setting, um, is made accessible to the public. So, um, Kelly's going to speak a little bit about this uh, in the third part of this presentation, so I won't linger on this too much. But uh, because it has been an emerging trend in uh, the university, it's also given the GCHP quite a bit of attention. Um, and it's also uh, allowed us an opportunity through the support of the university and our department at York to uh, widely disseminate or further disseminate the work that's being done uh, in the history department at York. So we've received several collections since we started. Um, I'd just like to mention one in particular because the donor is here with us tonight, uh, George Pavadatos, who spent uh, 15 years of his life in Toronto and uh, his collection, we just finished processing uh, three days before I left for Greece. Um, his uh, collection speaks to, uh, firstly, the anti-dictatorship movement in Toronto. It speaks to Greek uh, and an intercultural exchange between Greek immigrants, uh, Chileans and others who were politically mo mobilized uh, in the Toronto scene. And it also speaks to the modern Greek program um, and its implementation in uh, the Toronto University system. So aside from these details, and um, if you have any other questions, please feel, be, uh, please feel free to ask me at, at the end of the presentation. Uh, there are some more intellectual uh, goals that we have with the GCHP. So uh, the first is one that we've encountered with our interaction with the public, and that is that uh, people think that history is sort of uh, simply a bank of historical facts. Now, uh, the response to that is that history is not a simple bank of historical facts, and that um, history is guided by very, uh, a very specific uh, narrative, and we remember certain things uh, purposely, and we forget certain things purposely. And so what the GCHP is trying to do is remember aspects and the factual colors that speak to a more uh, complete understanding of the Greek immigrant experience in Canada. And of course, this is to counter the perceptions that Greeks are mainly restaurant owners, uh, in addition to the other stereotypes that have been popularized in, in media. Um, my big fat Greek wedding is probably the best example of this. So, I'd also like to uh, the Greek Canadian History Project is also uh, working towards a goal of speaking towards to the people that are kind of they represent the ambiguities excuse me the ambiguities in national narratives and so it kind of speaks to this uh, emerging uh, discipline of transnationalism in that. Um, we're not just specifically uh, looking to illuminate the world of Greeks or of Canadians, but the world that uh, is formed when the two worlds are conflated. And so this is something that has been uh, ignored in uh, the national, uh, in Canada's national narrative, historical narrative, in the immigrant narrative of uh, immigrants in Canada. And as I've understood through many conversations with Saki and many uh, colleagues that I've developed in Greece, that Greeks in the diaspora are rarely mentioned in any uh, history classes in Greece. And so I think that uh, initiatives like the Greek Canadian History Project are really seeking to illuminate this world and speak to the importance of how uh, you know, the world that they went to shaped them and also how uh, potential return migrations or the ideas that flooded back shaped Greece as well. So I'm going to leave you with that, and I'm going to pass the floor over to Professor Gethas here, and I will see you shortly. Thank you. 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 Good evening. I would like to thank you all for being here, especially David uh, and uh, Jonathan. I want to thank you again for your hospitality. 
Uh, I promise not to be here again in two weeks' time. Thank <laughs> 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 you. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you. I also want to thank especially Marilyn, uh, Professor Lambert Rush, uh, for being uh, a huge supporter of everything we have been doing and of uh, what we are aspiring to do uh, in the future. And basically for uh, all of us being here uh, tonight <coughs> with Chris and uh, Kaki. Uh, the uh, Greek Arabian History Project uh, has a very brief history that Chris outlined. Uh, I just want to continue from something that he mentioned, that it is uh, a huge gap and quite problematic uh, situation we have at Greek, but also uh, Greek Canadian uh, schools, or other Greek schools in Canada, that uh, the history of Greeks abroad, or the history of the diaspora as it is often called, is not really taught at Greek schools and I would say in very very few courses at university departments even despite the obvious significance and the huge chapter that the history of Greeks abroad uh, occupies in Greek history and as uh, I found out not long after I went to Canada and uh, Chris and Kali know all too well uh, the history of Greeks in Canada is not really taught at uh, Greek schools in Toronto at least either. Mm -hmm. So there is a great uh, lack of understanding of people's recent history, of their own history, if you like, of the history of their parents and at most grandparents, because we're really talking about uh, an uh, a explosion in the, uh, in the numbers of Greeks who arrived in Canada between 1955 and nine, late 1960s. So what I would like to do in, um, in the next few minutes is to give you a sense of, of the academic goals of how we're trying to move uh, forward after having established an archive and a great partnership with York University, with some uh, people at, uh, in Toronto, and uh, I have to thank uh, especially Yoros Papadatos who's actually here and for, for having donated his, his uh, collection. So we're really trying and his collection, his donation to Europe really uh, makes very tangible what Chris mentioned that we're interested in the Greek Canadian in both uh, sides of, uh, of, the, of the world. Both the Greek, um, the presence of Greek Canadians in Greece, and many have returned, and Yorgos is by far not the only one, but also obviously the history of Greeks in Toronto and also beyond in uh, Montreal uh, as well, as well as other places where Greeks settled in the, uh, from the early 20th century onwards. The work we have done and we will continue to do in the, in the, with the project uh, aspires to lead to or to be, for, for it to become a, a center, a hub if you like, for the teaching, research and dissemination of the material we can and we will be able to collect in the future uh, on the history of Greeks in Canada. Uh, this is uh, something uh, that the world uh, was criticized slightly, but we'd like to think that it does democratize. It does. And, <laughs> and this is because it allows access, especially to digitization and all the wonders of modern technology, uh, that it allows people from all over the world to access documents on uh, the condition, of course, that the donor allows people to do so. And we don't and I certainly don't want to uh, get into all the, the legal complexities involving copyrights, but we are also blessed to have the excellent partnership with the, one of the chief archivists at York, who uh, very extremely convenient for us, obviously, uh, takes care of all the legal aspects of each partnership. And I'd like to stress that because, contrary to other uh, institutions or private foundations, perhaps, what is uh, our great advantage, if you like, is that everything in York is, because it has to be, very, very transparent. It is very uh, public, first of all, and York is a public university, and, it, and by definition, whatever we are trying to collect is not, you know, to take it from someone's uh, basement to, to ours, or uh, to, to keep it at home, or to use it for some sort of you know, commercial purpose, but it is all for the dissemination to students and researchers uh, alike. And of course the, the, the great need we think, and I was telling Chris that, we were discussing with Chris from very early on, uh, is that such an initiative 
not just the Greek Canadian History Project, but also a research center on the history of Greek diaspora anywhere in the world does not exist. And I think that there is a huge uh, gap here that needs to be filled, uh, that of course will draw on the, on the uh, presence of other immigrant groups in Toronto and Europe in particular. I can think of very few other places, uh, perhaps Melbourne would be one, that would be ideal for the creation of such a center and a, a initiative such as our project that is uh, host, hosting and its home to millions of people from all over the world. So uh, Melbourne, Toronto especially, uh, certainly is the ideal place, uh, the obvious for us in Toronto, a place to have uh, such a center and the, the creation of the GCHP, uh, the research project goes a long way uh, towards that. <coughs> And the reason for that is that we are aspiring to create knowledge by the, the work uh, uh, that people are already doing uh, uh, documents, and we've already have very few, uh, nevertheless, uh, quite important, I think, um, MA uh, essays, even a couple of undergraduate essays that look at uh, photographs and some of the material that Chris will present in a few minutes. Uh, but it, it certainly can generate even further research and interest and this is quite um, um, an impetus for, for further uh, research, but also it generates the production of historical memory. And I think this, there's a, a great uh, need for that too, as Chris earlier mentioned, that there's a quite a, a gap, or if you like, an unbalance, an imbalance between what Greeks remember their past to be and what uh, the a more uh, academic or uh, a more elaborate systematic, if you like, examination of, uh, and critical, obviously, uh, in the sense that it will not try to beautify uh, the Greek presence or celebrate only as it should the Greek presence in Toronto, but also highlight the more uh, difficult or even darker uh, aspects of uh, difficulties of this, uh, of this story, as there were uh, many. And it's interesting that people will tell you this in private communications or in personal stories and or even in interviews if they agree to do that, but not in any systematic, let's say, it's not on the historical record. You know, the Greeks you know, sort of struggled, but at the end they made it. And that's very true, but also it can uh, conceal a lot of other aspects of the Greek uh, immigrant experience. So the, uh, the center that uh, the the Greek and Indian History Project is definitely uh, something that we want to build on. Is obviously a great teaching resource that will complement the, the chair, will expand the study of modern Greek studies in York. And from my perspective, although I'm not really specializing on the history of migration and diaspora, it is uh, a huge, uh, a, a huge, but it's a very uh, important uh, aspect of uh, my work, as I see it, to create a. a an interest among researchers and especially students for the history of the Greek diaspora. And that's because, not in, in isolation, but also in terms of Greek immigration uh, in the past as well as uh, today. And I'll come back to that. Uh, the possibilities are also uh, growing. Uh, online courses will be very, very uh, uh, convenient also with the online material that we'll be able to have. And again, the great advantage of having the partnership with the York Archives, Library Archives, is because they have all the facilities that it would cost anyone else a lot of money to, uh, to uh, use. For instance, digitization is something that is costly, it is something that uh, not many people want to take on. And also it can create uh, synergies, such as inviting people or attracting people, if you like, from Greece, obviously, but also from the United States, which is very close. And we are still miles uh, behind, if you like, in comparison to the work that uh, Greek Americans have done in the creation of archives, such as uh, we are doing, but also in the uh, work and the writings. And now, a third medium, uh, if you like, or much more accessible, uh, film documentaries. And I think that's something that is, is very important to have as, uh, as a resource, as a teaching resource, but also for dissemination uh, of, uh, of research and stories of immigration uh, as well. What we are trying to do, uh, partly also, I mean, we're not trying to do too many things here, but we're, all, we're trying to take one thing at a time, is to think creatively about the possibility of 
uh, calling something uh, that around uh, history, literature, <coughs> music uh, that Chris talked about, uh, the field uh, of Greek Canadian uh, studies. And we're convinced <coughs> that even the possibility of defining Greek Canadian studies, because as you can imagine, these things are not entities tangible, but they are sometimes constructions or they are uh, under consideration, to say the least, and they take a lot of commitment and time. It is impossible to have uh, at least a history a field of Greek Canadian studies without initiatives such as the one we're trying to uh, continue doing, because it will enrich Greek Canadian historiography. As Chris very aptly mentioned, this is not just about Greeks in Canada in some sort of vacuum or isolation, but you cannot talk about the Greek experience in Canada between, without uh, talking about Greek society at the time when Greeks first arrived and later on, uh, how the Greek state um, uh, approached and, uh, and the, Greek state, the, the Canadian state's attitude to immigrants, all the things that really matter in any stories of uh, immigration. And, uh, and how, of course, Greek immigrants uh, responded to the changes and to the world they found, because this is uh, an, an adaptation, and we're trying, we're even uh, many of us sometimes fall into the, the mistake of saying, oh, you know, some of the people of the first generation didn't really speak uh, English at all, they never learned. But, of course, even that sort of enclosed or ghetto mentality, if you like, which doesn't really exist in, in Canada or Toronto at least, doesn't, of course, mean that these people were unaffected or remained insulated by Canadian society, not at all. And it is actually their experiences that we're really interested in finding out, as well as documenting the ongoing changes of Greeks in Canada uh, as generations uh, go by. The other advantage we're trying to, uh, to work on is that uh, initiatives such as ours really create so-called spin-off uh, effects. Uh, and we're already seeing that, you know, the partnership that uh, we are uh, having with the Neapos Foundation, uh, the Hellenic Haters Foundation, obviously, uh, and the, the fact that we're speaking here today is about the project, is, I think, a very apt uh, example of, uh, of this uh, partnership, as well as uh, consular uh, and diplomatic uh, services, such as embassies in both Greece and Canada. And I have to say, uh, because it's, it's, it's quite important that from very early on, we've always had the unwavered support of uh, the Greek embassy in Canada and vice versa, and of the Canadian embassy in Greece. And I think that's also very important to, uh, to consider. Another academic goal, and that's kind of, you know, for me, if you know, <laughs> every time I have uh, some trouble with a class and uh, finding students are not very, um, how do you, uh, not very, uh, interested in answering a question, I sort of uh, go back to the, to the question or raise it or ask him to consider and think what does it mean to be Greek Canadian? And everybody will just have to, will have, will say something, will always have to say uh, something to say. And I think the, what we're doing is also helping create uh, or continue a dialogue surrounding diasporic consciousness and the transnational lives of Greece and Canada in our case, but I think that's an ongoing and very lively discussion about Canada or Toronto, at least, as far as the little I know, a few years I'm there, in general. So it is not, as again, as Chris said, just about the Greeks of Canada or Toronto so far, but it's something that I think we really need to, uh, to consider, and it's obviously, uh, in the best example of that, is how uh, we learned a lot from the Portuguese Canadian History Project. You know, we share a lot of similarities as well as differences as they are emerging um, slowly. But uh, for us, it's also very important to not just create a center and a, and a, for, and a, and a hub for, or a critical mass, if you like, of uh, students uh, of teaching uh, a place for research as well, uh, but we also want to historicize the study and the formation of, uh, of Greek Canadian identities. We live in the present, although uh, I sometimes catch myself uh, thinking that you know I feel very comfortable in the 19th century, but uh, at, at least um, some, some days. But I think it's really important to consider that we're, what we're trying to do, and the example of uh, of this event tonight is, I think, uh, telling, is that we're also strengthening 
the, the, the relations between Greek and Indians in both Greece and Canada. And again, the example of Georgos Papadakos is the best one we could hope for. I could put it like that. Not just we could think, but we could hope for. And again, uh, thank you very much, Georgos, for all you've done. Uh, uh, finally, on a less uh, pleasant note, but uh, that's, uh, that's how things are, uh, we are seeing and something that uh, the project at some point, if not very quickly, would have to uh, respond in some way. And that is that the, another, an, another need for starting the migration uh, networks, if you like, is that the current crisis has reactivated existing diaspora and migration networks, and now you have a flow of immigrants uh, from Greece to Canada for the first time after 40 years. This, I think, and uh, no, I'm not just uh, uh, thinking something that I haven't I've read elsewhere, is that there, there might be a need to, to think about how the, the recent history of Greeks in, in Canada informs the, the ongoing uh, migration uh, histories of Greeks in Canada today. Thank you very much.